Hey everyone, welcome again to Indian Story Read Along. Today's story is going to be from Chandamama. Chandamama magazines were monthly issues full of old folk tales and uh, uh, tidbits, science, things like did you know, it was, it was so great. They discontinued publication somewhere around the, the 2000s. Um, which is too bad. So these are no longer in print and those of us who kept these um, We want everyone to see these stories. So this one is called a royal lesson Mahendra Varman once ruled over Mangalapuri His subjects praised him as a virtuous king especially because of his generosity the trouble was he did not distinguish between bad and good advice and accepted whatever was offered to him. This was perhaps his only weakness. Some people took advantage of this weakness. They succeeded in securing from him all that they wanted. Every time this would not be good for the country and as a result the people suffered. For example, at the instance of the affluent, that means affluent means wealthy and powerful together, wealthy and powerful, he would punish the innocent while the real culprits escaped punishment. In court, so that's, I mean, that's exactly how everything is today. Rich and wealthy people get away with everything. And uh, it's the poor people who cannot defend themselves and they don't have the money or the time to do so because they're, they're working all the time. Um, they're the ones who get caught for all kinds of things. Um, in course of time, people found his rule oppressive and they began to hate him. So guess how that turns out when you're on the side of rich people all the time, like ridiculously rich people. And the, there's way more poor and average and middle class people and they're not going to like you and they're the ones who keep you in power. So what's going to happen to this king? One day, the royal astrologer, Atmaraman, was passing by the king's chambers. He saw a villager carrying a jackfruit. Jackfruits are huge. They're like, uh, I don't know what the equivalent could be, like a small child. I, I don't know. They're like, there's enough to there's enough to feed an entire village in a jackfruit, just one jackfruit, and it's a, a giant oval uh, type type thing. Um, so Atmaram stopped the guy carrying the jackfruit. I see you're carrying a jackfruit. It smells good, and the fruit must be really ripe. Where are you taking it? This is the first jackfruit that grew in my garden, and I'm going to offer it to our king, replied the villager, who did not recognize the gentleman as the royal astrologer. So remember, remember, this entire conversation is taking place outside the king's chambers, and that's not a coincidence. Atmaran sees how the king is not doing very well in ruling the kingdom, and he's taking the advice of bad people, and uh, he wants the king to overhear this conversation. Atmaraman said in a loud voice, do you know why I stopped you and engaged you in conversation? I had a good look at your face and I find signs of royal qualities. I won't be surprised if you become king here one day. Mahendra Varman, the king, who was watching the whole incident from his balcony, was also listening to the conversation. There he is. There's the picture down there. You can see the kings up there in the balcony and down there in the garden. There's the astrologer and just the guy with the jackfruit. He wondered, uh, the king wondered why the royal astrologer had made such a prediction and why Atmaraman had not warned him that someone else might take his place as king. Meanwhile, the villager was very happy that he had chances of becoming a king. Who would not like to sit on the throne given a chance? You mean to say that I have royal qualities? He asked Atmaraman unbelievingly. Could you tell me how I have acquired such qualities? Of course, I can explain the reasons to you, said Atmaraman. But why should I bother if I'm not going to benefit? Oh, so he is uh, asking for a bit of a bribe. The villagers suspected that the gentleman was perhaps expecting a reward. Otherwise, why should he come out with excuses and evade giving him an answer? But then it was only just that the man was rewarded. I mean, it was only fair. You're right, sir. Who would make predictions like that without some remuneration or reward? I'm a poor villager and right now the only valuable item in my possession is this jackfruit. I shall certainly give it to you. Please accept it and tell me the reasons why I would be king. 
And then, here we go, Atma Raman gets to the actual point of this entire conversation. Fine, but do you have any idea who I am? prodded Atma Raman. To which the villager pleaded ignorance. He didn't know who he was. I'm so sorry, I don't know you. I don't think I've met you earlier. Ah, that's the point, remarked Atma Raman. Till now, you didn't know who I am, yet you had no hesitation in believing all that I said after meeting you so casually in the street. You were also willing to believe that a poor villager could become a king, and you were ready to give me the jackfruit which you were going to present to the king. I know what kind of a fool you are. Ooh, kind of harsh. I am yet to come across another simpleton who would believe anybody and everybody. If this country will have a fool and a simpleton as its king, and this is pointedly but indirectly talking to the king, you too can become its king. Why don't you make a try? Maybe you'll succeed. Oof. Totally, uh, totally took him down there. <laughs> But he's not wrong, but it is exactly, he's saying this to the king. If you're going to make foolish, foolish decisions just based on what anybody comes along and, and tells you and, and you work out a reward or something between the two of you, then it, there's really no point in a king being a king. A villager could be a king as well. And he's kind of indirectly saying, one day someone's going to replace you and it's going to be by force because a lot of people are unhappy with the way that you're ruling. But back in those days, you can't say that to a king because <laughs> they'll just like, especially someone who doesn't know that they're wrong and they are not reasonable, you have to kind of do this. You have to kind of pull a trick like this, the way that Akmaraman is doing. He is saying it indirectly and as if he's not talking to the king at all, hoping, fingers crossed, that the king actually gets the point. So then, the villager thought there was a lot of sense in what the gentleman had just said. You're very right. When you told me I have royal qualities, I did not want to think beyond that, and I forgot everything else, exactly what the king is doing right now. I believe in you even without finding who you are. I was also willing to part with the jackfruit, though I was taking it to the king. How can a fool like me become king? No, in the future, I'll only wish for what I really deserve. I shall carry out my original desire and take this fruit to the king. Mahendra Varman listened to the entire conversation and realized that Atma, Atma Raman had really meant it as a lesson for him. That is why he had raised his voice when he talked to the villager, so that the king would hear all that he wanted to say. From that day, the king became discreet and accepting the views of others. Discreet means like he used more discrimination, meaning he thought, he didn't just take any kind of thing that came to him, he thought very carefully about it before he decided to take one action or another action and decided who he was gonna take that action against. So looks like Atmaraman kind of uh, saved the king's hide there. So this is an example of a, a story that's in Chandamama makes you think, and uh, it's pretty detailed. And I used to love these, and I gathered them and, and kind of collected them like a squirrel, putting them putting away acorns. So if you want more stories like this, join us again next time on Indian Story Read Along. We will be reading things from Chandamama, Tinkle. Amachitrakata, all kinds of things regularly. All right, we'll see you soon.